the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the American College of Pediatricians just held its annual conference focused on empowering medical professionals to defend life. The conference, themed Caring for Both, was held in Nashville, Tennessee from February 25th through the 27th. The three-day event addressed the most pressing issues of the day facing pro-life physicians. Attendees were provided with educational resources throughout the weekend and equipped with the tools to advocate for the rights of all their patients and their own rights as pro-life doctors. Joining us now is Dr. Christina Francis, chair of the board at APLOG. Dr. Francis, thanks for joining us. Could you start by just telling us about your recent conference? Thanks for having me, Prudence. Yes, it was an amazing weekend of gathering together um, nearly 200 medical professionals, uh, like you said, in Nashville to really review the latest evidence that supports the pro-life position in medicine. And it was, you know, of course, wonderful to be able to be back together in person again and uh, encourage one another. And I think the most encouraging thing to me was uh, the number of uh, medical students, midwifery students, and other healthcare professional students that we had with us so that they could hear the evidence-based rationale for the pro-life position, specifically within the medical profession. Mm. And Christina, I know that you were joined by nearly 100 doctors at the U.S. Supreme Court during Dobbs' oral arguments. This case could overturn Roe versus Wade. How would this impact the goals and the mission of APLOG doctors? Absolutely. This is an exciting time uh, to be in the pro-life movement. As you just referenced, we had um, nearly 100 physicians and other medical professionals with us in front of the Supreme Court to really assert that abortion is not health care and that we support overturning Roe so that the, you know, the, the slaughter of innocent human beings is not sanctioned on a federal level, as well as the harm that abortion does to our patients. And so we as pro-life medical professionals, and we talked a, a lot about this at our conference this past weekend, are very excited that um, our hands won't be tied by the Roe decision any longer, that we can um, advocate on a state level in the states that we practice in so that our patients can be protected from the harms of abortion. And the other area where I really see this making an impact in the medical profession is because abortion has been sanctioned for 50 years on a federal level, there's a lot of pressure on physicians in practice, but also medical students that are in training, um, that abortion is somehow a normal part of the practice of women's health care and that they should participate in being trained in that or refer for it if they're not going to perform abortions themselves. And what we really look forward to is a day where, you know, there are states that don't sanction abortion and so that students can not only understand that this is not a normal part of practice. We know that more than 90% of OBGYNs do not perform abortions, but also so that students who are pro-life and don't desire to participate in any way in abortions will have places where they can go to train where they're not going to feel that pressure um, to do so and to violate their conscience. Mm, that's so important. And why is it important for physicians to understand that they are caring for two patients, the mother and the baby? And how do we impress this truth upon doctors who are currently pro-choice? Well, you know, I think that any physician who takes care of pregnant women, if they're being honest with themselves, they will acknowledge that they're taking care of two patients. It's one of the things about the field of OBGYN that I think most excites those of us who go into it. In fact, one of our speakers this weekend said exactly that, that he saw the challenge of caring for two patients at once um, to be so exciting that that's why he chose this field. So. You know, I think that every physician who takes care of a pregnant woman knows that they're taking care of two individual patients. And oftentimes um, that does present, like I said, an exciting challenge to maximize the health of both of those patients throughout the course of pregnancy. And this is not just a notion that, you know, we've come up with as physicians. This is supported by science. Mm. We know that the science is um, exceedingly clear that at the moment of fertilization, a new distinct and living human being comes into existence. And so when I'm caring for a woman in a high-risk pregnancy or even a normal pregnancy, my job is not just to take care of her, but to take care of her baby as well. And in fact, if I 
don't take care of her preborn child, I could have medical liability for not taking that second patient into account. Mm, that's a very interesting point. I want to shift gears for our last question. A few weeks ago, we spoke with APLOG member Dr. Dermot Carney about his efforts to challenge a court order that currently bans him from providing abortion pill reversal in the United Kingdom. He is a Catholic doctor. Could you explain briefly what abortion pill reversal is and give us an update on Dr. Carney's case? Absolutely. Abortion pill reversal is an exciting, um, not new anymore, actually, it's been around since 2011, but a treatment option that's available for women if they start the chemical abortion process and they take the first of the two medications and then change their mind and desire to save their baby. This is not forced on any woman, but it's something that should be available to women who regret their abortions and change their mind when they're in the middle of that process. And we know that this happens not infrequently. And so it basically just involves giving a woman natural progesterone, a hormone that her body makes anyways, but in slightly larger doses than what her body is making in order to counteract the effects of Mifeprex, that first medication in a chemical abortion. We know with um, data that's been collected over the last 11 years that uh, the success rate of that using the current regimen that we use is about 70%. And you compare that to if you do nothing. So if a woman takes that first medication but then doesn't take anything else, there's only about a 25% chance that her baby will survive. Mm. So this is life-saving treatment being offered to save preborn children, but also being offered to give hope to women who regret their abortion choice. And Dr. Carney um, was providing this in the UK, and unfortunately, the abortion industry filed complaints against him, and he ended up having his license restricted so that he could no longer perform this, this life-saving treatment. And uh, we were very honored to have him join us at our conference this past weekend. And um, it sounds like there's going to perhaps uh, be some news coming very soon on the status of his case. And so we're just very supportive of any physician who desires to give their patient choices, to give their patient the choice of being able to save their preborn child. And certainly, uh, Dr. Carney's no exception. Mm, yes. Well, he's certainly in our prayers. And so are all pro-life doctors across the country and the world. Dr. Stina Francis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.